I clearly remember the day I wrote Daydream Believer. And I had a, a music room with Wyeth prints on the wall, and I would just go in there and write all day, every day. And uh, it started out as a uh, suburbia trilogy. And uh, there was a song called, uh, Do You Have a Place I Can Hide? And there was another song called The Ballad of Charlie Fletcher. And then there was Daydream Believer. And I remember going to bed that night and thinking, all I did today was to write Daydream Believer. And I almost scrapped it because I'm ADD and little funny things irritate me. You know what can it mean to a... Uh, that drove me crazy. I thought, to it doesn't belong in there. What can it mean? And I thought, no, no one's going to do that song because of the tua. Is that crazy? What happened is I was at a party with Chip Douglas, who was one of the guys who auditioned for Dave's part. And uh, he was now producing the monkeys. He said, I'm producing the monkeys. Got any songs for the monkeys? And I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I played him Daydream Believer. He said, I have to have a cassette of that immediately. So I went home. I made the cassette and drove it to him in town. And he called three days later and said, well, they want to do it but they're going to change one of the lyrics and because the lyric the original lyrics now you know how funky i can be and he said rca won't let davy say funky <laughs> and i'm getting i'm getting haughty now you know i'm getting uh, mr integrity and i said uh, well no i said what do they want to do and he said they want him to sing now you know how happy i can be I said, oh, Chip, jeez, that even makes sense. So let me put it to you this way, John. If he can't sing happy, they won't do it. And I said, happy's working real good for me right now. Sure. <laughs> exactly what I said to him. And I went to, back to New York uh, about a month later when they were recording it, and we were sitting in the booth, and uh, Davey, they were all there. And he was playing back, and I said, Chip, this sounds like a hit. And he played again. He said, oh, this sounds like a hit. And it turned out to be a number one around the world. Around the world. And uh, since then, U2 did it, and then one of their worldwide tours. And the Edge did it as a solo, and before Tops did it. And now it's the uh, commercial for uh, eBay, it's played every time you turn on the TV. And uh, I, when I do it in a show, I say, to, you know, there was a time when I'd turn on the uh, radio and I'd hear a hit of mine. It only happened once, but it happened. And that doesn't happen anymore. Now it's when I turn on the TV, I hear a hit of mine. And uh, that song, that song is, I want to say, paid the rent, I'll say that song has kept me alive for all these years. It's, uh, I have a, an award from BMI that was, how many, two million airplays? Or four, I don't know. Okay, four. Four, but it's uh, been very good to me. But you, you know, it proves that you don't know a hit until it's a hit. I played it for We Five, they passed. Spanky and our gang, they passed. I used to do it in the middle of my show. No one reacted to it until the monkeys did it. And uh, then it just, it was gone. It was just into the ether, you know.